There is no story that inspires an interest in archaeology quite like the search for the lost Ark of the Covenant. After a long time, this treasure has been found, and what they found inside shocked the entire world. History, especially the history of faith, will have to be rewritten because of this. For many of us, the story began with Steven Spielberg's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Indiana Jones found the Ark in Egypt, from where it eventually made its way to the vault of an American museum. The weaving together of biblical history, archaeology and pure fantasy in this way is obviously highly entertaining, but ultimately, it's misleading. As we embark on a virtual expedition in search of the truth about the Ark, let's leave the world of fiction behind. In this video, you might be surprised to learn just how much the science of archaeology alone can reveal about its final resting place. First made at Emt Sinai as a repository for the tablets the Ten Commandments were written on. It traveled with the Israelites during the wilderness years and represented God's presence among them. As a storage chest, an ark was not an unusual item. We have other examples of such boxes from the ancient world. The Hebrew scholar and archaeologist Alan Millard has noted the similarity of the ark described in the Bible with a storage chest, complete with rings and poles, from the tomb of Tutankhamun. The ark was a storage chest for the Ten Commandments, along with other objects at the time of the Exodus. However, it was a dangerous artifact, used in battle by the Israelites, and not to be handled lightly. It played a prominent role in the period of the conquest, particularly in the destruction of Jericho. Once they settled in the land, the Ark moved from place to place, including Bethel, Shiloh, and, after a brief and uncomfortable time in the hands of the Philistines, Kiriath Jerem. In 1 Kings, we're told David took the Ark to Jerusalem, and his son Solomon placed it in the temple that he had built there. This is where the trail runs cold. After this, the Ark disappears from the biblical record. We know that the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, but there is no mention of the Ark in the extensive list of treasures they looted. Had the Ark already gone missing? Had it been hidden? These unanswered questions provide the opportunity for great speculation on its whereabouts. Jewish traditions do hint at the possibility that the Ark was hidden by the priests to prevent its theft by their enemies. Where might it have been hidden? Jerusalem seemed a good place to start the search, but no evidence of the Ark has ever been found there. Claims by Ron Wyatt circulated online but had no credibility. Wyatt was an American nurse with an enthusiasm for the Bible, who used his holidays to search for evidence of biblical stories. Despite not having any training in archaeology, he claimed to have discovered Egyptian chariot wheels from the time of the Exodus, the location of Sodom and Gomorrah, Noah's Ark and even some of the blood of Christ, which he had DNA tested to demonstrate the virgin birth. Along the way, he also found the Ark of the Covenant hidden in a cave near the Garden Tomb in Jerusalem. The only evidence for this latter claim was photographs, which were blurry when developed. No archaeologist recognizes the authenticity of Wyatt's extraordinary claims, and they do nothing for the reputation of Christian witness. But there also remains a large body of proponents who believe that Ron Wyatt really did find the Ark of the Covenant, along with his manifold other touted biblical discoveries made over a two-decade-long period. The answer to this, and many of Wyatt's other discoveries, Put simply, is that there's one key thing unfortunately missing, evidence. And none more lacking in evidence than what would surely be the greatest discovery of them all. The Ark of the Covenant, another Jewish tradition found in the apocryphal book 2 Maccabees, suggests that the Ark may have been hidden on Metnebo, near the Dead Sea, at the time of Jeremiah. However, this book was written long after the events it describes and finds no confirmation from the book of Jeremiah. If the priests had hidden the Ark, then there have been many opportunities for it to be recovered for use in the later temple. This did not happen. However, these observations have certainly not stopped people from looking. In 1983, the Biblical Archaeology Review investigated the story of an American enthusiast who had claimed to have found a hidden tunnel leading to a box fitting the description of the Ark in the Nabo mountain range. The Ark was exposed as another scam. Its manufacture was modern. Despite that, this particular story still circulates. Among the scrolls of the Essenes discovered at Qumran is a unique item known as the Copper Scroll. In this scroll, the letters were hammered into sheets of copper. 
The scroll lists 64 places where gold and silver were hidden. Like the other scrolls, the descriptions of the places and the contents are sometimes in coded language, so that the specific sites are difficult to unravel. Some theories claim that the Ark was hidden during the Siege of Rome in the Jewish Revolt, and the Copper Scroll offers a clue. The Ark is only mentioned twice in the New Testament. The Letter to the Hebrews, variously dated in the 80s or 90s CE, argues that Christ is the true High Priest, with descriptions of a heavenly temple which include the Ark. In the visions of John of Patmos in the Book of Revelation, he saw the temple in heaven, and the Ark of His Covenant was seen within His temple. Baruch is an apocalyptic text of the late 1st century CE, written after the destruction of the temple. It relates the story of angels descending before the siege to save the temple implements until the time of restoration. The earth was ordered to swallow them up. In addition to searching Mount Nebo in Rome, the Ark has been sought in other places. The Knights Templar, European knights dedicated to the church, were organized during the Crusades to act as bodyguards for pilgrims to the Holy Land. There are stories that while camped on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, they discovered treasures which included both the Holy Grail as well as the Ark of the Covenant. When the knights were banned and executed in 1307, rumors of their survival and their treasures multiplied over the centuries. A popular theory is that their treasures were stored at Rennes-le-Château in southern France. From there to Scotland, and then to the United States, on the theory that the Templars became the Masonic Order. Others suggest the Ark was taken much further afield. Raiders of the Lost Ark speculated that Pharaoh Shishak took it to Egypt in the 10th century BC after he had sacked Jerusalem. Indiana Jones assumes that the Ark was among the Temple treasures, though the Bible does not actually mention the Ark itself. However, Somewhere in Africa remains an intriguing possibility for the location of the hidden ark. Graham Hancock published a wildly successful book, The Sign and the Seal, Arrow, which claimed the ark had been removed from Jerusalem at the time of King Manasseh in 650 BC and made its way, via Egypt, to eventually arrive in Ethiopia, where it came to its present resting place in Aksum at the Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion. Hancock's book has never been regarded as more than fringe theory, but the claims regarding the church in Aksum have much stronger historical credentials. Various documentaries and books have drawn attention to the story of the Ethiopian church, that the Ark was brought there by Menelik, a legendary son of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. The Aksum church guards its contents carefully, and no archaeologist has been allowed to test their claim to be the custodians of the original Ark of the Covenant. Tudor Parfit, a professor emeritus at the School of Oriental and African Studies in London, has given some scholarly attention to their claim and the story is certainly intriguing. But only one scholar has ever managed to look at their hidden ark. During the Second World War, Edward Ullendorf was stationed with the British Army in Ethiopia. Using his military authority, he gained access to the chapel and was able to see the ark. Sadly, what he saw was no Old Testament relic. He considered it a medieval replica, of which it is only one of many in the churches of Ethiopia. However, Parfit gives good reason to think that, even though they probably never had the actual Ark itself, there is some significance in the fact that the Lemba people of Africa have preserved such an old replica of it. Ethiopia did have a large community of Jews, the remnants of which were airlifted to Israel during Operation Solomon in 1991. During the Middle Ages, however, the country was converted to the Orthodox Church. But the Ethiopian Church adopted the traditions. Every church has a taboo that resembles the Ark. There is a yearly festival where the priests march in procession with tabads on their heads. One priest is selected to spend the rest of his life as a guardian at the church in Aksum. All efforts to see the Ark have been strenuously denied. Have we exhausted all the supposed locations for the Ark? Not at all. There are claims that it is to be found in Ireland, near a tube station in London, and buried on a Canadian island. One thing that this overview proves is that telling a story about the Ark's secret location is a good way to sell a lot of books. But is it good scholarship? The search for the Ark of the Covenant does not always fit well with the nature of archaeology as a discipline. Over the past 200 years, Archaeology has emerged from a world of antiquarians and treasure hunters 
to become a rigorous science based on tried and tested techniques. Archaeologists are generally not out to prove or find something. The quest for the art gets archaeology the wrong way round. It starts with a conclusion and then looks for anything that might be taken as evidence of it. Archaeologists are concerned to interpret whatever debris of the ancient world is unearthed in order to understand the past. A broken pot might turn out to be more valuable than a silver necklace, shedding light on the ancient world. In the opening scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones triggers all manner of traps in order to steal a golden statuette. A real archaeologist would have been at least as interested in the traps themselves. We can go back further still. Prior to its placement in the temple, the Ark once resided at Kiriath Jirim. Recently, archaeologists excavating there have located good evidence for Israelite settlement and a large stone platform that had likely been used for religious worship. In fact, this structure is not unlike the much larger Temple Mount built many years later in Jerusalem. Despite being skeptical of the historicity of the Bible account, excavator Israel Finkelstein believes it is best interpreted as a shrine connected to the Ark of the Covenant. Archaeology has been able to provide us with clear examples of arcs not dissimilar to what we read of in Exodus. It has identified locations and structures that fit with what we read of in later biblical stories. Archaeology also helps us to recognize and dismiss hoaxes that mislead the faithful. But why has no trace of the Ark been found since the time of Solomon? Perhaps Jeremiah 3.16 contains the answer. In those days, when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, declares the Lord, people will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It will never enter their minds or be remembered. It will not be missed, nor will another one be made. The Ark of the Covenant remains an intriguing archaeological artifact. Who knows what archaeological excavations may yet unearth? But, as it stands, the archaeological record only fits with what we read in the Bible. 